What's up everyone, Talon from the Airsoft Headquarters here and welcome back. Today, we have the final form of the studio here. We have the background, the background lights, as well as the nice countertop for us to do a little bit more professional style of review videos. But it's gonna just be the same chill, relaxed format. As you guys can probably see right in front of me, we will be talking about the Psyonix Aurora Sport, which is a night vision camera that I currently own. I did purchase this myself, not sponsored by Psyonix, but gonna spoil it for you. I do really, 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 really love the Psyonix cameras, but we're gonna delve into why. But to give you some back history for anyone that does not know, I have owned the Psyonix Aurora Sport for a little over a year now, a year, two months, a year, three months, somewhere around there. About 10 months ago from the date of me shooting this, I did do a overview video featuring the Psyonix Aurora Sport right here. Now, granted, I did not have it for very long, so just wanted to showcase it and show everyone that I had it, and I did plan on doing some videos. And since then, I have showcased the Psyonix Aurora as far as geocaching, nighttime hiking, uh, using it for low light airsoft photography and video work, as well as using it within tactical situations, using it as a helmet mounted uh, night vision device. I would like to use it more often, mainly for the excuse that I can go out in the middle of the night and do some super cool tactical shooty shoot stuff, but I think I've utilized it and used it enough to where I can give a solid review on it. So without further ado, for anyone that doesn't know, what is Psyonix? Psyonix is going to be a manufacturing company that specifically uh, focuses on nighttime or low light camera systems that use proprietary ultra low light sensors inside of them inside of a camera case. Now that's kind of just the basic cut and dry as far as the Psyonix company. The camera is going to be marketed by the company Psyonix for nighttime hiking, boating, hunting, fishing if you want, um, airsofting, military, law enforcement, surveillance, search and rescue, and nighttime photography. So this really does have a very, very wide use and is currently being applied in all of those fields. What is truly remarkable is that this comes at a very, very low and affordable price point. There are currently four different camera productions available from Psyonix. Each one is going to have different types of sensors and hardware integrated into those cameras, developing a wider range of price points that these cameras are coming at. Currently on the market, these are going for $600 for the sport model that I currently have here, going all the way up to $1,000 for the Psyonix Aurora Pro, which is going to have a lot more features than this guy. I would like to get the Pro at some point, just full disclaimer, but I'm not able to pull the trigger as of right now or probably anytime soon. Daddy's got some bills to pay. What is super unique is that due to that extremely low price, these Psyonix cameras are available to the civilian market. And these you can just buy at a retail shop or even from Psyonix themselves without having to go through any type of crazy paperwork or filing stuff out or anything related to analog style of night vision or even firearms, because this is an all basic, in its most basic configuration, it is a camera. It's just an action camera. But what sets this system apart is that it does have capability of working in low light or near low light. So how does digital night vision work? Well, it is going to be a digital camera and it is going to be designed more like a mirrorless digital camera, currently like the one that I am recording on right now. What it does is it runs the image that it is recording at through multiple sensors before it ends up at the viewfinder that you would be able to see if it's mounted on the helmet or if you're holding it onto your hand. These different types of sensors are going to isolate different color modes or it is going to uh, highlight um, some of the darker environments or it's going to render the bright environments super lower. So you do have not a dynamic range, but you have an acceptable amount of range when it comes to digital camera systems. Uh, if you look at videos featuring the analog style of night vision, if you were to look at a super bright light, it does tend to over brighten that specific area where the light is. That is something that with the Psyonix camera being digital, 
it will compensate for that extreme light and it will start to darken either that spot specifically on the picture or it will darken the entire space but also highlighting those darker environments. It's, it's a weird balance and it's super fluid and hyper dependent on the environment that you plan on utilizing this. And so that is just part of the responsibility of owning this, recognizing the amount of controls that you have, as well as being able to use it to its maximum potential. So what do I mean by using it to its max potential? Well, like I said, it is a camera in the most basic of configurations, which means you have all of the settings available that would be available in a normal camera, such as your ISO, your frame rate, your exposure compensation, your, uh, what is it? Electronic image stabilization, your HDR, which is your high dynamic range. Um, you also have zoom effect, you have your f-stops, and there's a couple other small ones, but those, the ones that I listed are the main ones that are utilized by traditional cameras, even GoPros themselves. So you need to be able to identify based on the environment that I will be using this, which it is available in daytime, twilight, and extreme dark or midnight. So you have a super dynamic range at which you can be utilizing this camera. The hard part is that during the daytime compared to this camera or even a GoPro, this is not super awesome as far as quality. This can only record at a maximum of 720 in pixels compared to 1080 or 4K and even you know, 1080, 4K super easily on this camera specifically that you guys are looking at me through. So the image is going to be significantly better with those two systems compared to these within the day. However, at twilight, when it starts to become darker and there is lower light for cameras to pick up and their sensors, this becomes very difficult to utilize, specifically down at the Airsoft Arena for any of the lights out event, this will not work. This camera that you see here has better sensors compared to the GoPro. And so I would be able to take this down to a three second shutter speed if I were to use this on a picture format, then I could get a little bit brighter of an image compared to the Psyonix, which I can still utilize in 720 pixels, 60 frames per second, and I can use it in video mode to record what I am seeing as I go around. So this is better optimized for darker environments. And I'm sure I'm showing you some of the B-roll as far as footage as I'm talking. So why would I personally utilize a Psyonix instead of the analog style of night vision that people see the current military use, law enforcement use, and even the super tactical cool guys use? Why would I go with this? Well, first of all, within my specific scenario of utilizing this for airsoft gameplay or even ultra low light uh, photography of players, this can record. I would need to get even more money in order to utilize analog style of night vision. And even then it would be very, very difficult for me to use it as a helmet mounted device. Uh, this also utilizes a standard rectangular format versus analog style are designed to be a circular style. So I physically get more picture in a rectangular format. The cost as well is extremely low. Now I just got monetized on YouTube, but that doesn't mean I'm making bank on YouTube. So currently what I can afford without having to save for a year, two years, this is what I can pick up at this current time. Sure, I would like to do uh, testing or even collaboration, or maybe even in the future purchase analog style of night vision for myself, but currently what I need and what I plan on utilizing this fits what I need right away. Speaking of pricing, like I said, this is going to be the 600 to $1,000 dependent on the camera versus analog style of night vision can go anywhere from $1,200, $1,400 for super worn, abused, pre-owned analog style of night vision up to $20,000 or more, again, dependent on the brand and the style of night vision that someone would want to purchase. And there's always the accessories that need to be included on the helmet or on the rifle setup if that is something you intend on getting. 
Something else that is super, super critical to the performance of the Psyonix is that it can record in color. Analog style of Night Vision can't record in color, or it can't even see in color at all. Your options are green or grayscale. This does color, green, and grayscale. So I can do everything and have a third option, and I can still record off of it. That's amazing. Not only is that awesome as far as available content for viewers, but it also would allow a shooter to, I, to further identify a target. Now I'm saying all of these super, super great things, but what are some of the issues that I personally don't like? Well, with the Cyanx camera, part of that is knowing the limitations of the camera and knowing where it truly can be utilized. The best way to describe this is to think of a carpenter, right? A carpenter always has his tool belt and doesn't have the same tool on there. He has a wide range of, of tools available at his disposal. It is up to the carpenter to utilize those tools in a correct manner and in the correct method to create a finalized project. You know, if he was told to make a Spanish armoire, then he would have the tools to make a accurate and ornately decorated Spanish armoire versus someone that doesn't know a carpenter's tools probably wouldn't even get to the point of creating the frame of an armoire. So people need to know what devices can be utilized in what scenario. Again, here's another great example. Here's this camera that I am recording off of specifically for YouTube. While I do record this, it is only in nighttime where this camera and this GoPro won't be able to see. Likewise, if I wanted to play airsoft in the day, I would helmet mount this to be on my helmet and not this and not that camera. Not gonna happen. If I'm shooting during the night, this camera, not that camera, not this camera. Knowing what tools and what scenario they're going to best operate in is part of being an operator as well. Just know your tools, know the accessories and how to best apply them. That's it. Now, that being said, two of the things that I personally don't like about using this system, when I go into a dark corner and I'm using the color mode, there tends to be a lot more noise on the screen itself as far as those crazy vertical lines. And I'm probably showing you footage right now to best show you how weird and disorienting those vertical lines are. But there are a couple of, manner, uh, a couple of methods that someone can work around that and that's either by utilizing the grayscale or the green mode to not allow the colors to shine through within the noise. So part of the disorientation is watching the greens, reds, and blues pop from those vertical lines versus going over to a grayscale. Those pops are less noticeable because they just blend in with the gray or the white coloration of the entire image. Same thing is said with the green scale mode. Um, or I could just shine a IR or a visible illumination device such as a flashlight into the corner, thus highlighting the entire image. You know, those are two very specific methods to correcting that noise issue that I would be having. The second thing is more of a old habit that I personally have grown up with, with using camera systems, using the highest of gigabyte SD card that I currently would be able to utilize. So I have a hard time mentally processing 32 gigabytes to be put into a camera versus with my GoPro versus 128 at the lowest for the GoPro Max and then a 250 or higher for this camera specifically. But that's just an old habit because I can actually get about three hours of recording time even at the highest settings. You know, that's a super high frame rate, super high pixel size, and running color mode, right? All of those settings would allow for a bigger um, 
picture or video format size or file size, excuse me. So 32 gigabytes still is more than enough when it comes to recording with the Psyonix cameras. So that's just something that I personally have a hard time with. The other issues that other reviewers will talk about are kind of just small minutia bullshit that just comes from user error in my personal opinion. But it is something that should be addressed and I can even highlight some of the corrections that should be made. One of the biggest things that reviewers will talk about is the lack of battery space. Yes, if I'm recording, then I'll only get about an hour and a half of battery life, despite the fact that I can get three hours of recording using the 32 gigabytes. So how do, can I get all three hours without having to change the battery. Now, I may be thinking outside the box, I may be thinking as far as outside of our realm of reality, but I think we might be able to get to a technological age where we could take small little boxes and we would be able to harness the power of lightning and store it into these little boxes and use it to power things. I think we already have those. External battery packs that are 20 to 30 bucks. And these will last five, seven, eight, nine hours with a Psyonix camera. At that point, there's really no excuse to about how there's no battery space. Just hook an external battery pack up to it, bro. I mean, come on, you use this to charge your phone. Why would this camera make any difference? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm starting to get raged a little bit because I get so angry at people that just make the biggest fuss over small little bullshit. One of the other things that I have heard reviewers talk negatively about is the fact that they use the J arm, which is specifically for PVS 14 style of analog night vision, which holds the device at a 45 degree in front of the user's eye. Now this is very difficult because that J arm um, holds the Psyonix camera at a 45 degree angle and it offsets the sensor or the viewfinder at this crazy angle. However, that can easily be fixed by using the correct tools and accessories. So one of those things being a very popular arm. And I currently have two of these. So this is one model that's available on the market, a Wilcox style, and then I have a FMA Rhino arm. So two different manufacturers that I have. And I look at these reviewers and other content they produce and they have these same arms. And it's like, bro, you are so stupid. You're bitching about how your shit's crooked. Use the proper tools and accessories available to you that you have. But I do need to admit that they probably are not purchasing the correct bridge mount for the Psyonix cameras. In order to mount something flat, you need to have something that would offset the camera because as it is right now, so as it is right now, they would mount a, a Wilcox shoe and it would slide into the very center of the helmet, which is not usable. So if they put a shoe onto the top here, it would sit right there, right in the middle of the nose. Not really usable if you want to use it as a viewfinder. So it needs to be offset just a little bit, just like an inch or an inch and a half. So the best way to use that is to use these pieces that are molded by people on Etsy, which means they're very, very cheap and they're inexpensive. Dudes, about how the shit's crooked because they're not utilizing the correct tools to get the best performance. And it's like, bruh, again, I'm starting to get riled up because I see these dudes have the correct arms and shit and then they're about how their shit's crooked and it's like, come on, just use the right shit, bruh. Just that shit together. <sighs> Namaste. So overall, I really, really like the Psyonix cameras for a basic civilian that is using it for a basic application such as nighttime hiking or airsoft or nighttime photography, this does wonders. I was, was able to pick this up before this jumped up in price. So I picked this up at $400. If you want to get this at $400 as well, you will have to wait until Black Friday or until Psyonix starts to run any type of special deals or anything. 
Um, so just a heads up there, 600 bucks, and I can record off of it, and it's in color, compared to Gen 3s that are $3,000, and I need to spend more money on the arms and the bridges, and I gotta spend more money to get shit to record off of it. And I'm gonna pick one over the other, just because it fits my needs and it fits my application for my purposes. And that's all up to me. It is always gonna be up to you to identify what type of system will best work with your situation. That is a conversation you need to have with yourself. I am just here to provide information and insight and basic education, just basic, basic ass education, like don't put the camera on an arm that puts it at the 45, even though you have the correct arm. Oh my God, I get so frustrated over that. But one of the other things that I want to do for the future is I would like to do a more in-depth science review where I go over specific settings that I utilize and some of the settings that I have found to be best for individual performance. I set my camera up at a higher video setting in order to get the best quality of content for viewers in order to identify what I am seeing. However, that does not always work out for physical application and be able to utilize them in the lowest possible situation or the lowest possible light environment. Uh, another video that I would like to do for the future is a possible collaboration video. I know there's a couple people that do run real analog style PVS 14s and I would like to reach out to them to see if they would be interested in hosting a side-by-side -side, uh, video between analog style and PVS 14s. I know I could rent them. However, if I got a second or even a third opinion, between both systems obviously as of right now we know where my where my preferences are if i were able to show these to someone else that utilizes analog style night vision maybe we'd be able to have a conversation and that's currently it that i have for today let me know down in the comments section below as well as with a like if you guys do want to see me do a science video about the settings um, and about any other type of video featuring the psionics that you guys would like to see i would like to do some gameplay however it is super, super cold, and I am currently waiting for an outdoor field to be open and available for nighttime games. So they are coming. Just got to wait patiently. Um, other than that, I am all done here, guys. Let me know if you got any further questions down in the comments section. And like always, you guys take care, stay safe, stay positive, and I'll see you in the next one.